Hello everybody, I'm Melissa and welcome back to Book Bar and welcome to another Trope Tuesday recommendation video. And today I'm going to be doing caretaking romances, romances that have like a very specific caretaking scene, whether it's a sick bed or injured or something like that. Um, there are, I mean, it's very common I mean, anytime anyone is like, there's a lot of like moments of caretaking in a lot of romances, but these 10 that I have, I have vivid memories of these caretaking scenes um and so yes <laughs> i a couple of these are new reads and which is why like they inspired this video so the first one that inspired this video is if you give a single dad a nanny by ann einerson this follows dylan and marlo and uh marlo is dylan's nanny he, or for it's the nanny for his daughter lola and lola gets ill she get, gets sick and marlo takes care of her and then the bug transfers to Marlo and Marlo gets sick and Dylan takes care of her. He takes the day off. He does all this stuff for her to take care of her. And he cleans her apartment. He washes her laundry. He does all sorts of stuff and he walks her dog. It was beautiful. And it was very reminiscent of another book on this list uh, that I will talk about next. But yeah, it had a wonderful caretaking scene. Then the next book, very similar caretaking reason is Heartless by, which I actually have. Heartless by Elsie Silver. This follows Cade and Willa, and Willa is Cade's son, Luke's nanny. And Luke gets very, very ill one day, and Willa takes care of him. And very similar, like, to if you give a single dad, like, if you give a single dad and nannies, seem very similar to this as where both the heroines are, like, frantically trying to get a hold of the dads, and the dads are very busy at work and can't help at that moment because something like happened at work and it's like crap what do I do <laughs> so both had and then of course in this one Willa gets ill and Cade takes care of her and it was just beautiful he like lets her sleep in his bed oh loved it so much um yeah that really like was so they were very similar in like like caretaking moments and uh I mean it's a very common thing so I'm not like it's not that I'm like oh it's a copycat I mean it's very just it's a common thing but I loved both of them so much and it's a very I feel like nanny single dad that gives way to a lot of great uh caretaking scenes because a lot of time I mean, kids are gross like kids are disgusting <laughs> they get sick very easily uh they touch things they're not supposed to they put their mouths on everything especially like five six year olds like they're around other gross sick kids kids I mean I was a teacher for second graders and parents just don't care. They'll send their kid to school. Their kid then throws up everywhere. And guess who has to clean it up? The teacher. So then the teacher gets sick and I really like, sorry, tangent. But yeah, so it, I feel like single dad nanny really adds because a lot of times, I mean, the flu is very, very easy to pass on. So it works great in that trope. But yeah, that is book number two. Then I have Through the Glen by Samantha Young. This is the third book in her Highland series. This follows Sarah and Theo, and Sarah is has a secret identity. She is actually a very popular author uh, for, sorry, my aunt called. So I was talking about Through the Glen by Samantha Young. Uh, so Sarah, Sarah is an author, and she asks Theo to help her make her books into a movie because Theo is a screenwriter and he's like no I don't adapt I only do originals but he ends up he is kind of in a writer having having writer's block and so he goes he decides actually I am going to do this um but Sarah has now quit working at Ardenock and has moved to a small little countryside town and he goes there and Sarah is violently ill when he gets there and he takes Theo takes such good care of her it was just absolutely adorable especially because like they weren't they didn't really know each other and he was like stepped up and was like I'm gonna do this 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 real it was absolutely beautiful then I have Powerless by Lauren Roberts another I feel like another great like fantasy romances historical romances like especially like old you know old tiny type things have great ways of having caretaking because medicine isn't the same well in this one Kai and Peyton Peyton is a powerless. She lives in the society where she doesn't have, where you, why can't I think of what they're called? The powerful are called uh, the elites. Uh, and they have 
basically killed off anyone that is not an elite, that doesn't have a power. But Peyton has convinced people that she is a psychic, so she has like a very lesser power. She's just learned how to read people really well. And so she convinces people that she is a psychic. Well, one day she ends up saving the prince, Kai. And then she is sent to this trial, very Hunger Games-esque. Um, there she gets injured and Kai takes beautiful care of her in one of the like trials. And it's just, oh, he like saves her from getting unalived. It was so good. I loved it so much. I just loved this whole book. Um, I mean, it is very YA. It is very tropey. It is all of the things like very, I mean, I talked about it in my birthday book tag. Uh, it is very cliche, but I absolutely adore this book so much and I cannot wait for the second one. Next up is On Thin Ice by L.A. Cotton. This is the second book in the Lakeshore You series, I believe it's called. This follows Harper and Mason. It is a enemies to lovers type of romance and Harper actually has celiac disease. So, and I don't personally have it, but I know like Ava from Ava's Romance Reads cannot eat gluten. Like she gets very sick if she eats gluten. And so I believe from what I've heard that this has very good representation of like someone that can't eat gluten. Um, Harper ends up eating something cross-contaminated and gets very, very ill. And Mason and his little brother who has autism take care of her. And it was just so adorable because the brother was like freaking out because he has, he, you know, he has autism and hadn't experienced anything like that before. And it was just absolutely adorable. I loved it. Fantastic. Next up, we have Forget Me Not by Julie Soto. This is kind of at the end of the book. Um, the heroine, Alma, something happens. <laughs> and like on the day of like the biggest, most important wedding of the year. And Alma gets injured and Elliot comes to her rescue and he does all the stuff to make sure that Alma's wedding that she's planning goes off without a hitch. And it was just beautiful. Uh, but this is it. Forget Me Not is a second chance romance between Alma and Elliot. Um, I actually have the book, but I'm staying I'm currently like in the middle of moving. And so I don't have everything around me with me, but I actually have the beautiful Illuminate edition, but I also have the regular edition, <laughs> but neither are with me. Uh, this follows Amma and Elliot and Amma and Elliot dated at one point in time. And this is told on two timelines, past and like in the past, it's told from Elliot's perspective. And in the present, it's told from Amma's perspective. And they used to, Kind of, they, they used to have a thing and we know that it's been like two years and they have not had any contact with each other. Somehow she has convinced every couple that she's worked for to go with a different florist. But this new couple that she's working for, who is a social media influencer, um, really, really wants Elliot to be her florist. And so they end up having to work together and things start happening. But yeah, like I said, the caretaking scene in it, it was... Very much like he was like, no, I am doing this for you. Like, stop. It was fantastic. Then we have The Bride Goes a Row. This one is less like someone was sick or someone was injured and more just like emotional caretaking. So Catherine, Catherine and Preston were supposed to get married and it's she waited a year and she goes to him and is like, let's get married. Like, let's start planning this wedding. And he's like, never gonna happen. And so she goes to a club masquerade ball scandalous party and she has a night with a uh in disguise man turns out that that man is Preston and they decide to have a little tryst with each other why not they've become friends things have happened well Catherine learned something well Pre well one Preston does something pretty shady has a lot of groveling to do and Catherine learned something that's very like emotionally jarring to her so she runs away to her family's cabin up in the mountains and Preston follows her there and he this man goes to this remote cabin because he has one nearby as well and he makes her dinner every single night and he brings her just like little treats and things every day and it was just out. So it's like not as much like like you think of like the sick bed type of caretaking. This was just really like emotional caretaking. Like he was there for her without being like she didn't want him 
around like she kind of said was like no but he was there for her and like showing her all the little ways that he loved her and it was just ugh, loved it so much then another historical romance with a wonderful caretaking scene is secrets of summer's night by lisa clefis this follows annabelle and simon and annabelle is quite poor her sheen and she knows she needs to get married uh preferably to a duke or an earl an earl like a titled gentleman as you will uh but she just keeps getting drawn to this need man simon just keeps getting drawn to him and one day annabelle is out walking around and she's wearing some pretty terrible shoes and gets bit by a snake and simon that man takes so much care of her and then he buys her new boots oh i loved it I loved it so much fantastic caretaking scene love it then i have broken records by brie bennett um, who I believe has changed her name. The cover's changed by Belle Chaplin. Cha Chaplin? Chapman? I don't, I'll put it right here. Uh, this book is Jack and Lucy. And Lucy is very, one day she goes to a record store and is like playing her, like looking through records. And Jack scares her. She punches him in the nose. Um, turns out Jack is actually a famous musician. And he kind of needs to spurs up his image so he keeps asking Lucy to marry him he ends up getting really really sick and Lucy takes care of him while he has the flu it is beautiful um uh, it is so because she's just like not that type of person like Lucy is uh neurodivergent and it's just very much like has a schedule and a way she wants to do things and ugh, I loved it so much and I don't talk about it enough um it's very like I need to talk about a more book but I've read it I read it like four years ago now love it so much then the last one I have is Between Hello and Goodbye by Emma Scott this is different kind of hair caretaking also so this follows Faith and Faith is working in Seattle doing the daily grind going out partying every night showing up late to work and she kind of fumbles something at work she's very good at her job but she fumbles something and her boss is like you know what take two weeks don't come to work don't think about work go on vacation like Figure your life out, basically. So she goes to Hawaii. And while in Hawaii, she's hiking and she trips and falls. And she gets rescued by a search and rescue firefighter type guy, Asher. And he knows that she has no one around. So he does all sorts of like little things for her and ugh, loved it so much. Of course, Asher's from Hawaii, lives in Hawaii. Faith lives in Seattle. So there's going to be some issues that they're going to have to figure out along the ways but yeah loved it so much <laughs> then I have four books on my TBR that have caretaking scenes or I believe they have caretaking scenes from what I have seen on Goodreads um they were shelved with caretaking scenes so the first one is an offer from a gentleman by Joanna Julia Quinn this is the third book in the Bridgerton series um this is Benedict's story so I know it's a Cinderella retelling I need to read it then there's The Taming of a Highlander by Elisa Braden. This is the second book in like her Highlander, Scottish Highland series. Um, I read the first one and I really enjoyed it. So I need to continue. Then another one that I saw was Wild Pitch by Cap Geraldo. This has been on my TBR for a while. I really just need to get to it. We're getting into baseball season, so I could be picked up very, very soon. Then there is A Deal with, a De with the Devil by Elizabeth O'Rourke. So... I don't know if those actually have caretaking scenes, but from what I've seen, they do. So yeah, uh, let me know down in the comments what your favorite caretaking scene is. And if you made it to the end of this video, leave me the like puking guy emoji because sick bed. <laughs> I don't know. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all the fun stuff. It really helps me out. And I'll talk to you all in the next one. Bye.